Edgar de la Guerre. Edgar de la Guerre. Amélie Wouter de la Guerre. Elie Wouter de la Guerre. Nedgar, Nedgar. Nedgar, Nedgar. Okay, and welcome to another edition of Free Thinking. This is the GGP Lifestyle Podcast. And Free Thinking is a podcast for anybody, well, for all the free thinkers, self improvement devotees, business people, hip hop heads, music lovers in general, martial arts enthusiasts, and generally cool motherfuckers. Today, I'm going to just have a very quick treatise on nationalism as something popped up in my life this morning. So let's see if I can get this done in seven minutes or less. Let's go. Okay, this is just going to be one that's um, you know, off the head. I ain't really got any very clear notes about this. It's just something that happened this morning. And basically what occurred this morning was, um, you know, as always, as always, <laughs> it's Facebook. And you know, I'm not going to call the names, particularly because these are people who I actually really love and respect. And I guess that's why it surprised me the most. You know, I put a, I, I put a post on Facebook, um, something very innocuous. Um, and somebody pointed out that, you know, I'd got someone's nationality wrong. It's a bit like the whole kind of, um, Africa wins the World Cup with like you know majority African players playing in a French squad. Someone now felt the need to point out that you know I'd got the nationality you know of a region wrong, and I was like okay, so I apologise because for me it ain't no big deal. Now I'm a man as you can tell, probably tell by this podcast, I can argue my point, but you know it wasn't you know it was one of those you know why argue with people you love. So I was like yeah, it's cool. I apologise. I didn't mean to do that. I meant no harm. And then someone else was like no, yeah, that's quite a mistake. And I was like, you know, um, someone else who I love and respect dearly as well. So I was like, okay. And I said to myself, you know, I get it. Like, I really understand why this is important to you. Yet, as people who I really love and respect, I found it really very sad. Now, here's the thing. And I, you know, I've got love for people. You know, I said already, if you've got a friend in me, um, you know, you got a friend in me. Um, you know, literally, Toy Story. I mean, I'm Woody, man. Let's not go there. That's a whole other story. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> if you've got a friend in me, then, you know, you got a friend in me for life. And if you've got an enemy, it's exactly the same. So, you know, I ain't trying to argue with my friends. I just made a, an apology, you know, and I, and I figured it would be enough. And I'm sure it will be. But I was still surprised that, you know, how people were holding on to this nationalism. Now, I really understand, to be honest with you, why uh, particularly these people find it important. And I guess in a way, that's the reason why. I really realized why it's so important that they let go of their nationalism. Because what happens when your nationalism is under attack, you find it super important to defend it. And what it does, is it gives you the right to defend your nationalism. It means that you are correct in defending your nationalism because it's under attack. But here's the deal. And this is what I thought to myself. This is the reply I was going to make, but I decided not to because I, I love these people. There's no point. I mean, yeah, of course you can argue with people you love. It just wasn't the right forum. Do you know what I mean? And my thing was like, well, here's the problem I have with, you know, what you're saying to me, man. Um, I am a former black nationalist. Um, in simplistic terms, that means I put black people, African descendant people first. And, you know, I wouldn't go as far as fuck everybody else. But most definitely my um, thoughts, aspirations and alignment was with people of African descent. Right. So at the end of the day, when you're talking to me about nationalism, man, um, you know, I've I, I, I've got the T-shirt. In fact, I waved the banner. In fact, I was like, you know, at the forefront of the banner for quite some time. Um, and again, the reason why I was involved in that, because as a black male <clears throat> 20 years ago, um, my livelihood, you know, my liberty, my freedom, that whole American thing, I don't know yeah, exactly how to phrase it, you know, the whole life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Well, all of that shit was being threatened to me on a daily basis. You know, I could go into it, but it's just boring. You know, if people don't understand um, the lack of opportunities and the lack of freedoms experienced by minorities um, when they are, you know, in hostile environments, even environments that pretend to not be hostile, you're just, you're either willfully ignorant or you're just Rip Van Winkle. You've been sleeping. You know, there's, there's a million documentaries out there going through the daily attack that minorities have, um, you know, particularly migrants. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm a second generation migrant. I'm born in the UK, but my parents came to the UK from the Caribbean. They went for those kind of daily attacks. Um, you know, no, 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 no blacks, no Irish, no dogs, no jobs, um, worse jobs, less pay for the same work. 
everything that's you know you could imagine so i don't want to go through that because you know i really shouldn't think there is any need so you know the, the to me the logical response to that was that okay well if everybody else is attacking me because of this one reason which is my nationhood it makes sense to band together with other people in the same nation and defend ourselves so that basically makes you a nationalist and i think it'll be the same you know that's why i always understood women's groups i understand lgbt groups i understand for example why there are women's marches where they say that men shouldn't talk actually i think that is very 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 mistaken but i understand the logic behind it um and uh, and that's where the, the root of my nationalism came from you know it was a logic self-preservation every human being is a self-preservation machine and my logic so logical self-preservation said to me yo basically you are in a minority and in the worst end of the minority you're a black male in in america mo you know people are predicting that you'll be dead before you're 21 in england people are predicting that you'll be if you're not dead you'll be in a dead end job for the rest of your life nobody has got a system the system is not organized for you to thrive and prosper and have life liberty in the pursuit of happiness so you're gonna to have to do the things um that you know allow you to do that for yourself so i said i don't want to get too much into that i'm just explaining to you that believe me when i tell you i got the t-shirt i got the t-shirt and uh, and the prints worn out so what changed well a number of things but you know to cut a long story short here's what i really understood what well, is what this is the the understanding the the thing that i learned that basically changed me from that stance without again jumping into conspiracy theories because i don't really think you need to the very simple reality is this the powers that be thrive on divide and rule i'll say this again the powers that be thrive on divide and rule I'm not getting into the powers that be are again. If you don't know that, go Google something. But the point is this. These international cabals, they don't have no nation. They might, you know, find it useful, for example, to have the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant at the forefront of the power structure. But actually, they couldn't give a shit, even though they're white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. Why? Because they actually don't give a shit about other white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. Because they're into eugenics, they're into bloodlines, they only care about themselves and their own bloodlines. Um, and that's why they're so quick to use white Anglo Saxon Protestants. And again, this might you know, this might be not be so mundane. Do a bit of research, you know, um, and understand, like, you know, if you really look at the landed peasants, landed peasantry and the way that, you know, um white Anglo Saxon Protestants were treated by their own landlords and owners who were the first slaves in Europe, well, you'll understand that, you know basically there is a okay that's my first of minutes you understand that there is a a history of you know a hierarchy where white anglo-saxon protestants treated other people badly and didn't worry much about their white anglo-saxon protestantness <laughs> not me because they were a lower class a seen as a lower form of human being so my point is um you know the powers that be these eugenics driven bloodline multi-trillionaires um could give a fuck about any of us but what they definitely give a fuck about is making sure that we don't join together and the 99 percent of the planet who only accumulate um 50 percent of the planet's worth i got the statistics exactly right but there's lots of statistics bouncing around like that the top one percent um collectively um have you know 50 percent of the world world's income or or or, or wealth um, you know, the other ninety nine percent, the last thing in the world they want us to do is stop saying, Hey man, you're Ukrainian and you're Somalian and and you know and you're Venezuelan. Um, but hey, fuck that. We're all ninety nine percenters and we need to join together and do something about the fact that we only have fifty percent of the wealth on this planet. You know, man, I ain't trying to get into no conspiracy theory, you know, there's a there's so many ways I can go with this conversation. I've had the conversation my brother, my, my, my brethren, Kevin, about, you know, if you really want to get out of the Matrix, if you really want to get out of Babylon, I saw a wonderful interview with Arasta talking about, you know, not being, you know, the people who talk that but don't mean it. And that's the conversation we had. Like, you know, you really want to do that, go find yourself a kibbutz and go live on the land and grow your vegetables and, 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 and milk your cow and get your eggs and, and, and be cool. <laughs> you don't have to be part of it. So I ain't trying to make that argument. I'm just making a very simple, basic argument that, when someone comes to me with nationalism now, I understand that it is essentially flawed. I don't give a fuck who you are, where you're coming from. Because you drawing the line of the sand based on your nation basically tells me that you are separating yourself from the rest of the other 99%.
And what my problem was, I thought my enemy was white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. And let me tell you how stupid that was. That was exactly the same as me, who now sees your average white Anglo-Saxon Protestant um, Brexit voter who thinks his enemy is a, is a Eastern European migrant or a Muslim because they want to wear a hijab. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's the same flawed argument of thinking that other people who are just like you are your enemy. And the funny thing is, watching it 20 years later, removing myself from taking that position, that standpoint, that view of the world, and looking at, you know, and again, I'm, I, I'm, you know, it's broad strokes, right? I'm not saying everybody who voted for Brexit is a racist or everybody who voted for Brexit, you know, um, did it because of migrants. Although, I, I, funny enough, I, I find very few of them who, you know, they, they, <laughs> everyone will come and tell you that I voted for Brexit because I don't want to be part of a European superstructure. But yet, somehow, I, I, I find very few of them um, counteracting the arguments, the very flawed arguments about, um, you know, Muslims, the Islamophobia that always seems to circulate in these Brexit news groups and Facebook posts um, and, and the anti-Eastern European um, phobia that always seems to circulate in these Facebook posts. Um, quick example, because I was going to do a podcast on this, just a real quick one. Somebody, unfortunately, I try and you know, cut these fuckers off my, my, my um, news line. This is literally sent me mad about four years ago. Someone posted this thing about, you know, Islamic men grooming young white girls and saying that it was the part of their religion to do this. This is utter, utter, utter fucking toxic, shitty diatribe, which we've all seen a hundred times before. This bullshit. Big, 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 big post about this. Right. But I didn't see a, a week later when I, on my BBC News, I saw a big um, expose about an ongoing court case about a medical doctor who, along with his staff, were drugging, sedating, tying up and raping young girls in a um, government facility. I haven't got the names, but I'm sure you can Google. Just put doctor drugged and raped girls in a medical facility um, from the age of about nine or something like that. I didn't see the same guy putting up the same post, right? Of course not, because it doesn't feed into his um, into his diatribe. His diatribe is, I'm a nationalist and we need to protect our nation from these invading, raping, child molesting, murdering, um, zero or low wage income job taking hordes. That's his, that's his diatribe. But, you know, he has got nothing to say about, you know, when other people in his nation do worse if not the same worse i say worse because i know that that's a real a real value judgment my point is when you go to a doctor um by a government funded facility it's not the same as somebody who's predatory and equally evil using his predatory you know um circumstance or, or mentality to try and abuse people you're going to a place where the person you're going to should have been um double checked triple checked quadruple checked um, and should be trusted and his staff should be trusted if he wasn't trustworthy then the staff should have been trustworthy to blow the whistle and make sure that this guy didn't abuse these women but yet in the structure that we all pay our taxes into and the ones that you know tell me that i can't visit what used to be my nephew because they you know they crb checked me but they didn't want me to visit my nephew when he was a care home so I left him in there getting his ass beaten up by bigger boys with no one to support him um they'll, that, that same structure that allowed me to stop me from you know supporting people i cared about put this man in place and allow them to abuse children for like you know whatever it was 10 15 20 years so my point is you know the nationhood stops there right because you're quick to to, to, to point to tell a story which is you know without a doubt a, a, a horrific story about evil perpetrated by people um from a part of the world although probably blown out of proportion distorted because these stories always are to, to 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 fit the story you know the, the the story and the framework they want to put it in but you're not quick to talk about the same people from your race the race that you're waving the flag about the nation that you're waving the flag about when they're doing the same thing um so you know that's why it's bullshit and like i said unfortunately i got the t-shirt on it i've been there done it on some dr dre shit i've been there i done that you got gats I got strapped. I've been there, done it. Like I said, it's not like I got the t-shirt. I wore the t-shirt. The t-shirt's worn out. There's no print left on the t-shirt. I did it. You know what I mean? But what I'm understanding is that it's divide and rule. It's divide and conquer. Um, And, you know, I was just very sad that in the 20th century, people who I know know better 
were buying into that and so quick to jump on it. Like, you know, I was like, does it, does it really matter if I, if, if I use the wrong, the, the, the wrong country name for someone? You know, I mean, I, I'm sure, it, and I think I'm sure it does. Do you know what I mean? It's like te- calling a Chechnyan Russian, right? But what they have to understand is that, you know, the global manipulators who are oppressing them are also oppressing the everyday Russians. And what the everyday Russians have to learn is that they're not better than, you know, I don't want to go too into that example because again, I don't want to get lost in, you know, a particular zone or a particular conflict because obviously people with much more knowledge will come along and, and correct me. The point I'm making is, that, like I said, the one I can, I'm sure I can talk very simply, best for me, I suppose, is second generation African Caribbeans talking about frigging, um, frigging, frig, frigging Muslims and and Eastern Europeans taking our jobs. Like, are you on crack? Do you know what I mean, seriously, are you on crack? Have you really bought into that? You need to go talk to your parents, because when your parents were the ones being labelled with that bullshit. And when they were telling those lies about your parents, we were talking, telling lies about the African Caribbean stud raping the, 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 the you know, the, the, the white lily flower and da, 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 da. When your dad just wanted to come over, do some work and, and, and marry his childhood sweetheart from the, from the islands, you know, they, they lived all of that, um, all those lies and that diatribe and now you're buying into it. You know, so I find it really very sad, you know, and I think the best examples of it, and I you know, have to say again, because it just shows a, to me, Maybe not a shift in the zeitgeist, because it probably wasn't. It really probably shows, if anything, just my naivety. As, like I said, the Brexit vote, which was, you know, so fueled by nationalism, nationhood, control our borders. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, we want to choose who comes out. We want to make our own laws. We don't want the Europeans. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying those arguments are wrong. I'm just saying, saying what they were fueled by, because... The broke ass people in the council estate, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants with six generations of family from the UK who could trace their lineage lineage back to the Celts, who were waving their St. George and talking about control our borders and we don't want people coming in here taking our jobs. They're giving their votes and their support to people who are gentrifying the same areas they live in and selling them properties that are super high premium to other rich elite one percenters from around the world. So how fucking stupid are you? Do you know what I mean? It's like you're supporting an agenda that's working completely against you. Because if you don't want to have to move out your area, well, this whole concept of controlling your borders ain't going to work because the only person you're controlling your borders against are other 99 percenters. Poor ass broke Caribbeans, Muslims, Arabic um, people from Arabic countries, North African countries, um, excuse me, asylum seekers, um, you know, um, and economic migrants. People just the fuck like you. People just like you. You know, and, and, and that's the other side of the argument. Again, this goes way back into the whole African Caribbean, you know, North American slavery thing that, you know, the whole idea is you take somebody who's, you know, take two working class people and you tell one that they're better than the other. You know, it's what we used to call, um, you know, when, when your boss gives you the praise but not the raise. You know what I mean? It's like what these what, what these one percenters are doing, they're telling you, hey, you're better than him. You can have that. You ain't have no more money. <laughs> but, you, but you can be sure and confident in the fact that in society, we're going to push an agenda. Um, we're going to we're going to push a media agenda that confirms every single day that you're better than him. There you go. Be happy. But actually, in reality, economically, based in, in a comparison between you, him, and me, you two motherfuckers are exactly the same. <laughs> and I'm rich, bitch. <laughs> so you know. It's off the cuff, most of these are. And I, I said, it just came up because I was just surprised to see people to jump in on this nationalistic agenda, even though, like I said, I love and respect them both. And I actually know why they did it. And they are from a particular region where, you know, it's a region under threat. So I really get it. I still just said to myself, bro, because my answer was going to be, yeah, I, I don't think you guys really understand my background. I've been there. I've done that. I want to see Dr. Dre, Dr. Dre again. I've been there. I've done that. And what I've learned is the answer isn't um, nationalism or worrying about what your region is. The answer is humanism. Worrying about what other human beings are suffering, 
how other human beings are living, how we can work to create an agenda where we can all raise the water level where all of us have a better living standard. And, you know, I used to be, that's why I was a radical um, socialist Marxist because that was the whole idea, raising the living standard of everybody. I, I don't subscribe to that either, you know, anymore. But the logic is, you know, I certainly don't subscribe to um, putting down other people who are exactly like me um, just so I can continually fuel the one percent. It's almost as dumb as the uh, as you know that um, that just giving page to try and get. Um, I think it's Kylie Jenner to become the first billionaire because she's on her way. I ain't even mad at that. I know people get really mad at. It. I ain't mad because you know what? People donate money to what the hell they want to. It's their choice. And if you're a young seventeen year old kid and you're brought into the dream and you'd love to see Kylie Jenner become the first female teenage billionaire, then donate your money and be happy. Do you know what I mean? But it's just really, really, really bizarre that, you know, what it is, is you now people are really pushing and feeding into an agenda that doesn't work for them. I'll tell you now, nation, na nationhood does not work f for people. I've got nothing wrong with nations and nothing wrong with being proud of your nation and your ancestry and your history and your lineage. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you start drawing, the first thing is borders get redrawn all the fucking time. So, again, when people start thinking about, I'm so-and-so because my board is here, I'm like, dude, you just don't understand that father time controls all things. And that, drew, that line drew in the sand probably didn't exist 200 years ago and or 2,000 years ago. I'm definitely one of these 2,000 years from now. That's why I, got, I still got friends who tell me that they're Persians because they don't know what the fuck Iran is. I don't know what they're talking about. They know about the Prince of Persia and Aladdin and, um, you know, all those great stories about the great Persian Empire. And that's who they see their lineage as. They ain't trying to worry about the line that was drawn in the sand later on by conquerors. And that's why some of the other regions, you know, like you go to Africa and you see all these like, you know, unilaterally designed um, lines like, you know, what happened in India after partition and all the madness that was created by that and the lines drawn in the sand in places between South Africa and Zimbabwe and all these, you know, um, all these lines are just bullshit, just drawn by somebody for their own economic advantage, your own economic and political and control advantages. And then we stand up and fight, fucking fight other people over them. Do you know what I mean, we stand up and we fucking fight other people, sometimes to the death, over a line drawn by somebody else right through the middle of a community for their own political and economic advantage so seriously nationhood i'm not on it man i'm not i'm not in it you know what i mean and i, I think I've, I've tried to explain why i've been very relaxed today i know i talk a lot so i was really trying i wasn't trying today to get this done in seven or 40 minutes i really couldn't give a fuck um because this is a big one and and, and because it's unscripted it just made sense for me to allow myself the freedom to, you know, try and at least get the point across. And like with most of these things, I'm sure I'll be revisiting it. And maybe at some point I'll start doing these things with a little bit more research. So I'm going to apologize in advance for any examples I've used. Like I think I mentioned the Church and the Russia thing. And, you know, I don't want to get too deep into conflicts that I frankly know fuck all about. Other than what I get fed by, you know, the 1% the controlled media. Um, you know, I don't really want to get too deep into that. I just want people to understand my broad strokes that tell you that seriously, if you're on the border of a conflict, the probability is both sides of the people doing the fighting are exactly the fucking same. And they're both being hyped up by their leaders to hate each other over some bullshit. And then once they start doing shit to each other, which humans do, then they have a real reason to hate each other. But the baseline of this hate is bullshit created by two sets of leaders who are probably both part of one percent and are sitting down in a room sipping champagne and laughing while you're on the front line killing each other and creating more and more reasons to hate each other and continue killing and as long as you're out there still doing that they're still sipping the one um they're, they're still sipping the um they're still sipping the benefits of the one percent because they're all arms traders <laughs> i mean and they're all um constructors so once you've blown the shit out of the place they send in the constructors to reconstruct it they sell the machines to do the um the cleaning um and then they send uh, and then they send the ammunition to the next war zone um come on people we know this i mean you know some of you are going to still be telling me this is conspiracy theory i know there is more misinformation out there than information so in a way it's probably easier for me to learn this shit 20 years ago simply because the internet barely existed and there was so little misinformation <clears throat> if you were willing to do the hard work um all there was to find was information do you know what i mean um i'm not saying it was always right there's a lot of information out and misinformation out there but you know 
um, probably a lot less than now because it's so easy. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I still like you know looking at two hour um, flat Earth documentaries. You know what I mean? I don't misunderstand. Me. I ain't been out to space. I'm not saying it's straight up wrong. I'm just saying that you know um, I'm not really convinced about that one myself. Um, you know, so that's that's a whole that's a whole nother other. My point is, if you have a a, a scientific belief that is as strongly entrenched in in, in our world as the fact that the earth is spheric um you know um earth is round i was trying to say spherical i can't say that word now the earth is round and someone comes along and says nah bullshit it's the truman show um you know that's, that's a very big detachment and that's what i'm trying to say there's so much misinformation out there i get it but you know seriously there are lots of reports coming out I mean, you know, again i'm a broad stroke guy i don't care if if the one percent elite own 50 percent of the world's wealth or just 30 it kind of doesn't really fucking matter to me um, because the logic of it is the 99% shouldn't be fighting each other. Um, they should be thinking about a way, you know, to um, create wealth that allows themselves and other people like them to live a happy, fulfilled and sustained life. You know, and I'm not on some hippie shit. I'm on some straight up uh, Machiavellian self-interest shit. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I'm just like, you know, I want to live well. I deserve to live well. And I think most other people do. You know what I mean? But, you know, the lottery that we live in at the moment, it's rigged because everyone thinks that, yeah, we're going to jump on and bang the American dream, but you're not. Because, you know, they had a thing about self-made millionaires, none of whom were self-made. Do you know what I mean? They all had a lineage of rich um, relatives and fathers and whatever who got them started. Do you know what I mean? If I, I'd love to be self-made like Donald Trump if someone would give me a million dollar loan to get started in my property business. I started my property business with the savings out of my freaking um, IT job, me and my wife. We started our property business with our savings. Do you know what I mean? From, from 10 years worth of work. I'm dropping, I'm dropping, I'm dropped a million in my pocket and said, there you go, son, carry on the family tradition and, and, and here's 50 years worth of experience. So these self-made you know, millionaires, they ain't self-made. Yeah, um, you know, it's, it's, you've been hoodwinked. So, you know, when we're talking about, I'm talking about that side of the elite telling you to go out there and wave flags. Like I said, like Hillary Clinton, I'm not, I'm not a fan. I'm just making the point that she said, you know, while Donald Trump was talking America first, America first, she was reminding everybody that his um, hotels were built with Chinese steel. Do you know, because it's, it's, it's nationalism and patriotism when it suits you. And then, and when it doesn't suit you economically, you switch. So I think I've said enough. Um... Yo, I'm sad, man. I'm sad that in the 21st century, people are still on that shit. I really am. Um, I really think for our own health and progression and um, future benefit, we need to get off the nations and get back onto humanity. Wonder how the human across the road, across the border is doing and how we can work together to create something, you know, to create wealth so that we can all benefit. No worry about, you know, where they're from, who their ancestors were, what their historical achievements were, what some fa somebody that I never ever met and had no relationship to did in World War Two or this war or that war or who we ask. Get the fuck off that. That's just bullshit. And now um, it's just basically a way of pumping yourself up to feel superiority because you know in your heart you ain't done shit. So get off of claiming the achievements of other people that had nothing to do with you other than their their ancestors came from the same geographical location as you and get on with actually fucking trying to do something for yourself, for your community and for the planet. And nationalism has absolutely fucking nothing to do with any of that. Okay, man, I'm um, coming on half an hour, um, 28 minutes, that's that's enough. So um, this has been Free Thinking, the Grand Agoda Papa Lifestyle podcast. Um, boy, I don't know where we are again, but here's the thing. Hit the GoFundMe button and give us a donation, man. Let us keep keep on doing this. Go check out our website. We've got merch on the website. Something that you like, some music or some of our merchandise, buy that. Um, basically, and just keep on supporting us. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back with the next one. It gaff till a gaff. It gaff till a gaff. I'm in the with the till a gaff. Illy with the dilly gaff. Nid gaff, nid gaff. Nid gaff, nid gaff. I'm illy with the dilly gaff. I don't give a fuck with the dilly gaff. We ain't got no time for you haters. 
I do not respect anybody sitting behind a keyboard trying to belittle anybody making them feel bad about themselves.